conservative Christian cocksucker Conservative Christian cocksucker We want a fucker Talks about abortion Talks about stopping everyone from having fun How can you be so dumb? All this contrast For a country that won't last living in the past <clears throat> yeah morning no video bring to you hi yeah sorry good morning <laughs> um today i'm going to talk about lots of things i'm going to talk about the issue of um religion well not as in religion like as in like I just said in that song, conservative Christian cocksuckers, you know, the issue of religion and politics and all those things. I'm, I'm going to say it straight in hopefully less than 15 minutes. Probably won't happen. Um, but where do I start? I mean, just, okay, I'll start with how I felt like making this video. When I've been on, I've been on Facebook. There's this Facebook group called um, We Survived Bush. We Can Survive Obama. And, you know, people always have their opinions about Obama and Bush, you know, people, a lot of people say, you know, Bush was okay and then Obama messed it up. And people say Bush inherited one of the best economies and Obama inherited one of the worst. You know, maybe they both have some truth in it. I don't know. But, you know, the elections are coming up in, what, six months? Don't really give a shit. Actually, no. Well, I live, I live in England. It will have an effect. That's the an annoying thing. It will have a slight effect on the world who's elected. But hopefully not a giant effect. But whatever, you know, new elections are coming up, people are, you know, the serious candidates are coming up, you know, so you have serious candidates, you, you don't have, you know, randoms, you know, who like, oh, I want to be president, you know, you've gone down to the serious candid candidates, and you have to excuse my lack of um, knowledge, I could say, um, I don't know, there's, what I've seen a lot from, the issue I've seen a lot from, like, you know, the conservatives, the, the, you know, the issue of being contradictory and um, kind of forcing your will on other people. In in the sense that, say, for example, you know, like I just said, conservative Christian cocksucker, the idea of things like, you know, the you know the big issues that always come up, like, you know, homosexuality, abortion, um, a lot of little things like that, you know, lots of things like, you know, war, other things like that. So if we start with homosexuality, you know, obviously the gay marriage thing, you know, Proposition 8 that didn't work out last time, stuff like that. You know, people complain Proposition about gay marriage. The, the one, I know, I have a lot of things to talk about, really, I'd say. But the one thing I have to say is, you know, of course, I can use the easy the easy attack here. Look at Kim Kardashian. Look at any random celebrity that isn't worth shit anymore. Now, compare that to, I don't know, legitimate homosexual couple and think who's ruining the sanctity of marriage more, you know, I suppose. That, that's the one thing you have to think about. Um, but of course, you know, when you're conservative and you're overly forceful people's wills, of your will on other people, you know, you know, you, you forget about this. You know, you forget who's the real danger to the sanctity of marriage. Is it legitimate gay couples or is it completely fake, like, celebrity couples? I mean, Kim Kardashian, she had a... She had, like... I don't know, her, her, her marriage lasted like, 70 something days, I mean like, you know, all jokes aside, I've had, I've had shits longer than that, I've literally probably had shits longer than her, her marriage, all jokes aside, I probably have, so, you know, that's, that's the issue here, like, we're allowed to have homosexual marriages, even if they are heterosexual marriages, as long as they are, you know, anything, you know, no one really gives a shit, you know, who gets married anymore, I mean, I mean, it's that whole idea, like, of, like, love, you know, why do you have to put a mark on it? It's like, you know, the idea of platonic love is that, you know, you have love on an intellectual level, but without any physical level in place. You shouldn't need a physical level, which is the whole thing about, you know, have, having sex, you know, as a sign of love. When the highest, you could argue that the, Plato argued that the highest 
um, like the deepest level of love or something like that is, you know, on the intellectual, the emotional level, you know, you know, I don't know. So it's just, I don't know. The, the, the issue here is that with homosexual marriages, I don't think it would harm anyone. As a matter of fact, it might help the economy, you know, all that money that goes into the wedding industry from homosexual marriages, it'll be perfectly fine. I mean, you know, I, I don't think there'll be any detriment really, apart from the idea that we allow gay marriages. But I don't know. Some people are just against gay marriages because they don't feel it's it's appropriate. But I don't know. I, I don't think... It's one of those things, you know, If it doesn't really affect me. So it can't really be detrimental to me. So I don't, I don't mind. And then secondly would be what... Was it abortion I was talking about first? Yeah, abortion. Um, abortion. Issues of abortion, you know. The whole big debate over is it murder? Is it... Is it... I don't know whatever you want to call it, is it taking care of mistakes that you had one night? I mean, the issue is, like, if you ever find yourself in a position where you have to have an abortion, like, uh, illegitimate, it's funny, I say illegitimate um, position, like, illegitimate position, I, I believe, for, like, having abortion is, like, um, say you just had a silly one-night stand or something like that. Like, I'd call legitimate argument for abortion is, like, I don't know, um, like... I don't know, maybe, I think the only one really I'd say is probably rape. I think in that case, then there's maybe an argument for abortion. There's an argument there. But, you know, I believe even with that, you could still say, have the child and give up for adoption, which is the same thing with, like, teen children, which shouldn't happen anyway. Teen teen mothers shouldn't really happen because most people's bodies haven't even matured and that stuff. And it's dumb. It's like a lot of time, like, I've been watching, I've watched actually um, Archfiend and Untaker Freaks um, video recently about that. And it's just true, you know, like your body hasn't matured mature properly. But I'm not saying get an abortion. I'm saying give up for adoption to people who are more fit to take care of a child. You know, say if you're raped, take it to, you know, adoption. You know, we, we, we have enough. We have so many people who can't have children, for example. Like, I know some people, for example, they just don't happen to be able to have children with the person they love. Like, for example, um, someone has like sickle cell trait and they marry someone else that has sickle cell trait. Um, then it's really risky for them to have children, so they might choose to adopt instead. So, you know, stuff like that could happen. You know, one man's trash is man, another man's treasure, if you could say that with babies, if that doesn't sound too offensive. But yeah, um, stage of abortion, I don't know. I've heard stuff about a Christian, like, you know, the whole Christian ideal of, well, suppose the Christian ideal of, um, you know, them not allowing abortion, you know, because, you know, that makes you a whore and stuff like that. And it's it's little issues like this, like, a lot of the time, it's little issues like this, you know, that really annoy me. Because as a Christian, you'd imagine a Christian would want to follow in the way or ways and the morals of Jesus Christ, correct? You know, Christian, you are a follower of Christ, you're like a disciple of Christ, you could argue, you know? So you'd imagine a guy, Jesus Christ, who, you know, who hung around with the degenerates of society you know like the homosexuals the, the the seriously ill the lepers the prostitutes the stuff like that you know the tax collectors you know the the disciples were all a bunch of really bad guys in society's eyes you know but to jesus they were the top prize Ooh, rhymes anyway like it's that idea of like instead of isolating you know homosexuals and people who I don't know, say prostitutes or alcoholics, why can't we embrace them and help them become better? That's the idea that, that I hold, I think, closely with Christianity. Don't give up on people. I mean, the idea of Christianity is that, you know, God doesn't give up on you, you know? So why do these... This this is why I, I go along with the phrase Christian cocksucker, although I am a Christian. I go along with the phrase Christian cocksucker because conservative Christian cocksucker, because you are being, um, what's the word again? You're, you're being hypocritical to yourself. I mean, you, you, you preach about, you know, acting right and all that stuff. And then you, I don't know, you can't even take, follow the example. The supposed great example in a Christian's eyes would be to follow the example of Jesus Christ, as you know, the name would say, I suppose. 
and the issue here is that you know these people aren't acting exactly Christly, you know, like Christ. You know, I'm not saying be perfect. I'm saying aim for some form of perfection or aim for aim to be a good person to all people and be all inclusive and just like Jesus, you know, be 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 a nice guy, be open minded, be ready to help people rather than push them away just because they're in a tough position. Like, you know, should I abort this child or stuff like that? You know. If you look at all the really big Christian people, like say on TV, for example, I know, um, um, Joyce Meyer, for example, she was raped or abused sexually as a child, stuff like that. Bad stuff happened to a lot of people, you know, like a lot of things. But if you look at the positive side, that's the only annoying thing I have as well, as well with the other side of like, say, atheists. I understand, like, especially in America, it seems like in America, there seems to be a lot more like angry Christians rather than you know, what I call proper Christians. So I think what I see from atheists in America, say the amazing atheist and um, Undertaker 3, they seem to be angry at the system of people just being naive and not open. Not, like, I, I'm not saying you must change to atheism, but I'm saying be accepting of other people's, be accepting of other people's, you know, ideas at least, you know, whereas apparently the way they talk about it, it seems that the people that they i don't know the christians that they've seen in their lifetime seem more close-minded and offensive you know like overly stressing on the point that you must be a christian you know and things yeah like there's little just like god prefers atheists because atheists do stuff themselves and you know they, they, they're they good because they're good not because you know they they're told that about heaven i mean i i don't know i i don't I wouldn't do things because it gives me a reward. That's dumb. If you do things for a reward and only the reward, say the concept of heaven, you know, then what's the point in doing them, really? I mean, do things because it's the right thing to do, you know, which is what seems to annoy a lot of atheists, you know, the concept of heaven and hell. Why should there be a t deterrent? Why can't I just be myself and not be a douchebag? Which is what I believe in as well. Don't be a douchebag. Just don't be a douchebag and you get into heaven. You don't have to think. I mean, you don't even have to think about heaven. Just, just like, worry about that when you're dead, you know? Worry about the afterlife when you reach the afterlife. Just trying to be a good person now. It's simple. But I know, I, I guess I understand, like, I can feel the anger of the atheists against, like, you know, Christian church and the system of Christianity in their, in their country. I, I kind of see that quite a lot. They seem to be angry at them. And, you know, some of them just don't understand. Some, yeah, it is in the sense of the word, you know. You don't understand or relate or relate with the idea of a deity or some deities. I believe in God, you know. But I, I don't know. I, I don't believe in doing things just because there's a God there. I believe in doing things just because, you know, do them just because, just because, that's it nothing else do them because it's the right thing to do like i just said you know and of course you know another problem with the conservative christian cocksuckers you know like i've always said things like you know trying to join the church together and stuff like that like i remember seeing this thing about a certain candidate he wants to stop the iranians for example you know those um like islamic countries from being you know run by religious religious zealots but then he wants to impose like christian values in everything you know and i suppose i hope he's imposing the good christian values not not the crazy ott like you know the christian values such as you know killing and you know the the, the classic things you know like if you just focus on the fundamentals it's funny like the idea of like um fundamentalism is like i, I always thought of it when i was younger as fundamentalism was like you know just agreeing with the fundamentals of a concept like and I used to like say I'm like a fundamental Christian because, you know, in being a fundamental Christian, I believed it meant, you know, to follow the fundamentals of Christianity, you know, like, you know, the ideals and morals of Christ, for example. But then I thought it was, I didn't know it was like some kind of thing where you take everything for, like by the book and you take, you take every word in the Bible, although some of them do co like contradict each other, you know. Because they were written by different people. It wasn't one guy writing it. Otherwise, it's, it probably wouldn't contra contradict as much as it does. So I'm assuming, you know, since it was written by different people, it would have some contradiction, especially between, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament. But, you know, and, you know, speaking of that, Old Testament, 
you know, um, the issue of having problems with other people's religions, you know, that I've I've seen in, you know, in America, it seems like I have a slight, just, it seems a bit of xenophobia. I remember, like, what, in 2008 elections, the issue, like, an issue with electing Obama was that he has, like, Muslim heritage or something like that. I'm like, I, I, I don't understand how in America you have such, you, you have genius, you have genius here and there, you have... They have wonderful things here and there. I mean, like they put a guy on the moon. I mean, they can do that. When they put the, when American puts man to it and starts being a douchebag, they can do amazing things. But it seems like as a whole, they seem a bit more xenophobic than certain countries. Like in England, you know, you wouldn't see a guy talking about burning Qurans. That that doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen here because that's we know that's bullshit. You know. You might have some racist still, but you wouldn't have people burning Qurans and stuff like that. I mean, apart from the BMP, I, w- I wouldn't even think that anyone would do that because that's dumb. You're just warmongering for no reason. And being, and the issue here, I, I always have this massive issue where, you know, people talk about, you know, uh, the, the, these these Muslims doing stuff for, blowing themselves up for Allah and stuff like that. And the issue here is, you know, with with logic, with simple logic, you could deduce that, like, Judaism, Christianity and Islam have a lot of similarities. Simple logic, okay. Um, Jesus was a Jewish man, therefore he'd, well, he'd go to the synagogue as a child, probably. He's a Jewish man, raised in a Jewish family by the same Jewish God. He is a descendant in the lineage of the Jewish covenant you know the jewish government with god you know or yahweh jehovah you know yahweh god that communicates you know you have that which is why you know jews are supposed to be said to be god's people they had jesus on their side think about it we follow jesus christ and the ideals of jesus christ therefore you know the gentiles suppose the gentiles and disciples of jesus are like the christians same god here because jesus if jesus is the son of the jewish god and we see him as the son of God, then it must be the same God between Judaism and Christianity. Now, Islam, when Islam comes into play, um can't remember his name, Muhammad's Muhammad's um adopted uncle apparently was a Christian. Also speaking, all the similarities between names, Angel Gabriel, Angel Jibril, Abraham, Ibrahim, all the similarities, Isa or Jesus is probably i think the most mentioned prophet in the quran now if if jesus was said to be the son of god they don't in islam it's not believed that he's son of god. They, they believe him to be a prophet but they believe him to be a prophet of the same god that is worshipped in islam and therefore all three religions have the same god you know it's simple you could deduce from that if jesus is the son of the jewish god worshipped in Christianity and is a prophet of the Islamic God, then you can deduce that it must be the same God. And therefore, giant tie between the religions. But yet, in Israel, you have you have Israelites belong to Palestinians. And Palestine, I'm assuming, yeah, there's a, there's a war there, but it seems like Israel seemed like the more evil side, so to say. But there's no, like, bad side, good side, you know. But they they seem to be more evil side. They seem to also be on America's side, which is quite sad, really, because, you know... It's this whole thing about Christianity where it seems like, you know, the leaders, big leaders in Christianity seem to be bastards apart from the real cool guys. Like, watch if you watch Christian TV, like God TV or TBN, you see guys like Joseph Prince, you know, you see guys like positive guys. I said like um, Joyce Meyer before, Joseph Prince. You see, what's this guy's name? Really nice. He has like a Southern accent. He's a really positive guy. You have the positive message of Christianity, the idea of grace and peace. And stuff, and then you have these douchebags killing each other or, or giving weapons to a country like Israel so that they can defend themselves. I mean, what what's Palestine got compared to Israel? Israel's probably got one of the most sophisticated army forces in the world. Palestine, they probably have some army force, but I'm not assuming. I'm assuming that you know, but well, that's another argument. But it's the whole problem with religion and arguments over religion that don't really matter. I mean, this this is why, I don't know, I, I don't like saying this because it makes me sound like, you know, for example, like, you know, when, okay, let, let's make it a really simple analogy. Like, say, for example, people complain about PS3 versus Xbox, and then you have the PC super race, so so to say, because, you know, they, they have everything on PC. 
you know, it's like that where, you know, you have, um, I don't know, I, I don't like saying this, but in England, you don't have that crap, you know, you don't have, well, not to that degree, at least, you, yeah, you have people who are racist, okay, there's racists everywhere, there's douchebags everywhere, but you don't hear about, like I said, you don't hear about people burning Qurans, you don't hear about, you know, people being xenophobic towards um, Muslims, because quite a lot of Muslims actually are residing in England, you have a lot of black people, you have you know, you go, if you go London, there's still a bit of slight segregation, but not like what I, I hear about. I can't say anything about America because I've never been there, but the things I've seen, the things I've seen people talk about on, on the internet, issues or social issues that still seem to be a bit more prominent than in England. But I don't know, if you go London, so mixed, like in my in my group of friends, I'm Sierra Leonean. I have a female friend who's from Nigeria, another female friend from Nigeria, one from Jamaica. I have another one who's like, half Italian, half Sicilian. I have another guy who's um, Serbian, Lithuanian, Filipino, um, Bangladeshi, you know. I probably have one of the most multicultural ba like, batches I know, but it's still, that, that like, seeing us walk down the street isn't the most weird thing. It's funny when, like, we go and chat relay together for fun, all four of us, you know, you have you have the full smorgasbord of, of humanity here. And then, I, I don't know, it seems like, like people are, like, baffled at the fact that you see a multicultural group of people which is quite weird, which, which I'm quite proud of, you know, to see that, you know, I don't know, have a mix of, like, cultures and heritage. So, I, you know, even though I'm Christian, but half my family is Muslim, you know, and I can and I can relate to, like, my Muslim Bangladeshi friend, but, you know, I'm Christian, I can relate to my Catholic Filipino friend. Um, my Serbian friend is Orthodox Christian, you know, this mix is here, you know, it, it it makes sense. I don't know any Jewish guys, though, but I don't know. Um, shame, really. It's just the fact that you have a mix here, and I think that's the issue. I know, it's, it's sad seeing, like, there's still social issues. There'll always be some slight social issue, but sad seeing the effects of social issues, say, in the 20th century, still have their play, and they'll take a while to come back. Like, for example, like, Obama getting his Nobel Peace Prize, you know, when he was elected, what did he do for peace? I mean, I understand if he got his peace prize, um, say, like, after he took the soldiers out of Iraq and helped, like, calm that area down, calm the Middle East down. Fair enough. Give him the peace prize. But don't give him the peace prize for being elected. Because if he gets elected just because he's black and only half black, but, you know, forget about it. If he gets elected just because of that, then maybe she should give the peace prize to, like, Martin Luther King. He's dead, though. Um... Give it to someone who really fought for cultural change in the 60s. Something like that, you know. Give it to, I don't know, Rosa Parks is dead. Um, someone, someone, you know. Someone cool, like, I don't know, Corey Glover and, like, and Living Colour, you know. <laughs> that, that's just perfect preference, but, you know, but. I don't know, it's, it's little things like that, like. I don't know, it's funny how, you know, the current president of the United States is, what, part Irish part Kenyan, um, I don't know, has Muslim backgrounds, you know, born in Hawaii or somewhere, you know, there's a mix in him, you know, he's probably one of the most multicultural presidents ever, you know, from a single mother as well, you know, it's quite beastly, you know, like, he probably represents quite a few of the demographics in America, but I don't know. I guess the issue it's it's more of an inbred thing, you know. You have to understand multiculturalism, I suppose. You know, that, that's that's the issue here. You have to understand multiculturalism, you know. And it's like a lot of the time, you know, you have people. It's a, it's a sad that you have to make a point that you know, I'm American and I'm Muslim. You know, it shouldn't have to be a point. You know, you should say I'm American. I'm American. I happen to be Muslim, but you know, I'm American. I like being in America because America is a nice place, and you know, people are supportive and p people understand, you know, ethnic diversity. You know, but I don't know. It's sad that you have to make a point that you know you're Muslim and American, you know, or things like that. You know, when same God, like I just logicized before. You know, but I don't know. Um, anything else I can talk about Christian cocksuckers and religion? Really, I mean, just the issue of forcing your will on people. You know, it's it's not Christian. You know, <laughs> it's not Christian. Like. I understand people, if people want people to understand the point of view, they they explain the point of view, but they don't force it on people, you know, if, if you told people, you know, um, I believe in this because of this, I feel maybe 
you should probably believe in this too maybe i don't know that that probably the heaviest you know thing you could say to them rather than the whole thing like you know you're going to hell and all that stuff which is like evangelism i don't know it's it's a it's an on and off thing you know i suppose you could say you know jesus said you know we we shouldn't hang around in church because you're preaching to the converted you know you should go out and spread the good news but it's like how are you spreading the good news spread the good news in a positive way you know like saying you know if you can connect with like god and connect the morals of christianity then you know you can live a better life rather than saying you're going to hell or are you worried about the afterlife fuck the afterlife think about what will be good for me today i think that's the important thing with evangelism if as an evangelist i tell them you know maybe if you take on christian morals think about have something to focus on have a personal relationship with god maybe with that you know it can help you have a better life a more structured life a, a more stress-free life you know like how joseph prince he talks about grace you know like if he like i don't know instead of talking about you know talking about the afterlife and working working hard to get into the get into heaven which is like you know you're earning your way to heaven you know he says something like why, why, why should you earn something that's already yours you know the idea of god's grace is that it's already yours you don't have to earn it it's already yours you just have to accept it you know that's that, that this is why i like watching joseph prince i'm not the most religious guy in the world but i still like watching joseph prince because he preaches a positive message about christianity and we need more of that we need a lot more of that. Yeah, Joel Austin. That's that's the guy I remember before. Joel Austin's another positive guy. I like guys like him. He's real. He's not a warmongerer. He doesn't shout about heaven and hell and, and all that crap. I mean, you know, he talks about the positive side, you know, about li living with morals, you know. It's, it's that whole thing, like, you, you know, it's that thing, like, say, with having a holy day, you know. Well, actually, dedicate one holy day to, to, you know, pray and do that stuff. You know, it's like the whole argument saying, you know, every day should be Mother's Day, every day should be Father's Day, maybe every day sh should be a holiday, every day should be a Sunday. The way you act on a Sunday should be just the same as you act on a Monday and vice versa, you know. Yeah, you you come to church or you, you pray, at, you know, you you pray at mocks on Fridays or you come to church on Sundays. But then like the, the week after you're, you're, you're going out doing stuff like, I don't know, not like being too free with with men for example or being too free with the opposite sex i'm not trying to preach here i'm i'm saying you know i'm not saying don't have fun i'm saying you know just be careful you know i'm i'm not i'm trying to be a parent you know i'm i'm just a 16 year old youtuber here yeah, you know but i uh, know the issue is like the issue here is wait what am i talking about yeah the issue here is that with you know like i said christian cocksuckers conservative christian cocksuckers you know we'll, we'll focus on that is that you know it's all this force and all this this anger it seems like you know the warmongering christian cocksuckers you know who complain about everything like abortion that doesn't affect them you know it's that funny joke like um um a lot of people that talk about abortion are people that don't want to fuck anyway you know so <laughs> i don't know it's it's just annoying seeing people like that and it brings a bad name to christianity you know and then this this is why I can understand the atheist point of view, especially what it seems like in America, what it seems, because I can't say it, you know, it seems like there's quite a high number of people who are just, at least on some, some way, shape or form, a conservative Christian cocksucker, you know? So hopefully th this will change because there are some really positive people everywhere. There's douchebags everywhere, but there's nice people everywhere. There's geniuses everywhere in America, England, Switzerland, Germany, um, India, Sierra Leone, Senegal, you know, everywhere. I mean, but I, I just, I just wish that people could just be more accepting of other people. You know, simple. Be more accepting of other people. Stop being a douchebag. Be a Christian, not a cocksucker. You know, focus on the Christian part. Conservative liberal, forget about that. I mean, just focus on the Christian part. Like you're bringing a bad name to regular conservative Christians. People who just happen to be conservative and be Christian and actually are decent Christians. You know. Like I said, I'm not the most religious guy in the world. I'm not the Pope. But fundamentals, not fundamentalism, fundamentals of Christianity, very important. Especially if you're saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a Christian campaigner, you know. Focus on the fundamentals and you can't really go wrong. That, that's, that's the term, that's the idea that I've always had, you know. If you can do that, then there shouldn't be a problem, you know, really. Just stop being a douchebag, stop... Be accepting of people. Not really hard, guys. I mean, 
sad really because sometimes when i make these videos i'm preaching to, to the converted but hopefully maybe someone will see this and understand at least with the logic of say you know it's the same religion same people a human is a human you know be it a beggar a homosexual a a racist bigot even a racist bigot is still a human might be a bit of a douchebag but still a human and deserves to be treated as such therefore you know the whole joke allow homosexuals to be as miserable ever, as everyone else by being married you know let people get let people get an abortion if they if they need to I, I i believe in pro-choice but i don't believe in abortions as much i believe just have the child and give up for adoption because at least this way you have a potential child look at all the wonderful adopted people or people from single parent homes for example you know barack obama bill clinton steve jobs was was adopted richard morgan flyer otherwise known as rick flair one of the most influential and one of the most like respected wrestlers ever you know guys like him you know he was adopted you know so imagine the potential of your of your adopted baby you know like if we just give up for adoption as a matter of fact give your child up for adoption i'll adopt it later and i'll turn into him like he'll be a beast you know he's gonna be a beast he's gonna like take over the world but he's gonna be a nice guy you know stuff like that <laughs> you know like I, I just you know like I said, one more time, just stop being a douchebag. Be be cool, be calm, be a Christian. Well, I'm not saying you must be a Christian. I'm saying, folk, if, you, if you're saying you're a Christian, focus on the Christian morals, you know? Be a Christian fundamentalist, as I used to call it. Not not crazy Christian fundamentalist. I mean, focus on the fundamentals of Christianity that, in that sense, you know? So, yeah, that that's all I have to say for now. Um, so with that, I just like to say thank you for watching this vid. Thank you for listening. You know, this was a long video, and good night.